So I have in my hands a um, Russian-made turret viewfinder. And um, these things would have been uh, made to fit on 35mm rangefinder cameras. And you slide it into the hot shoe mount, uh, look through the viewfinder here, and by selecting one of the barrels at the front, you can simulate the field of view from of various different lenses. Now in the case of this uh, Russian made item, there are five uh, lens simulations here, ranging from 28 mil, 35, 50, 85 and uh, 135. It comes in a little Bakelite case, which is a pretty little thing. Uh, I would pack it out with some soft felt just to stop <coughs> this lovely little item rattling around and um, getting damaged. Um, the item itself uh, I purchased on eBay for 40 or 50 pounds and I was really quite pleasantly surprised um, at the quality of it. It feels like a like it was, like it was put together by a jeweler. Um, it has lots of little screws, lots of little bits of detail, um, very fine engineering. Um, certainly the jeweler's uh, screwdrivers that I have would have trouble adjusting some of these uh, very small precision screws here. Um, looking through the viewfinder again also is very satisfactory. Um, what you have is a lens uh, frame for the field of view that you've selected and the area around that is uh, is darkened out by uh, very fine line work. So all in all it just feels like a very uh, very well uh, engineered item, a very precise item. Uh, would I recommend it to the um, modern camera user, someone with a DSLR or or a, a mirrorless camera? Um, I would have to say in the short time that I've I've had this item I found it to be indispensable. Um, it's going to be traveling with me in the bag irrespective of whether I use one of my mirrorless cameras or a, or a standard DSLR. Now why why would that be? Um, well I have no trouble finding a shot, I have no trouble framing a shot, looking at the composition that I want. The issue comes with um, knowing the focal length, knowing uh, the exact framing. So if you've got a mirrorless camera that, that throws up all sorts of issues to do with um, battery life, um, looking at the EVF or the back screen. I, I don't know if you've ever encountered that problem. If you're a mirrorless user, we've got a speck of dirt in that little sensor that knows where your face is. And you do this awful dance where you're trying to preview your shot and you don't know whether to look into the viewfinder or look at the back screen and you know, you've got all that. But even with a, with a DSLR, um, having one of these um, just lets you do all your, all your, all your prep work prior to taking the shot itself. Um, so when I'm not using mirrorless camera to do my architectural photography, um, for pleasure I'm often um, out in the countryside with my medium format camera, my phase one camera, and uh, that's, that's, a, that's a traditional um, you know, through the lens um, uh, camera. But uh, you can imagine it will draw an awful lot of, uh, of attention taking a, a camera of that size out and trying to, to find your best shot. It's nice to be able to take your camera out of the bag when you know exactly where you want to be and, um, and just having to deal with the uh, uh, minutiae of uh, fine composition once you've actually established um, where you're, where you're, where you're taking your picture from. Um, so I had this the other day. I was in, I was in Brighton. I took a walk into Brighton. I, I, uh, I was there visiting relatives. It wasn't a great day for for photography, but I bagged 
a really nice shot. I had to do it opportunistically because I had uh, children in tow, so I was I had another agenda. Um, but I walked up to the derelict East Pier, and um, I wanted to take a picture from a certain angle. And I know that I would have been pacing around with my kit half out of my bag and my my uh, my tripod, my heavy Gitzo tripod on my shoulder, just trying to find the right place. Um, instead, I had this in my pocket. It was just like a carrying it around like a little director's viewfinder, you know, like the ones that, that, uh, that Stanley Kubrick would ha carry around his neck. I simply found my spot, lined up the shot, and then I could just drop my, drop my bag, get all my gear out, um, do the framing precisely, and uh, crack on. And I was really satisfied with that. And I, I know it would have been a, a much more difficult uh, enterprise in the drizzle and the rain and the cold um, without this. So I, I highly recommend um, this viewfinder for any photographer, really. The only, the only caveat I would say is this hot shoe mount here, unfortunately, it's just a little bit of slop um, on a hot shoe. So I wouldn't uh, trust it to stay there reliably. Um, so only um, affix it. Well, you don't, need to, you don't need to put it in your hot shoe at all, actually. You can just carry it around in your pocket, as I did. Now, soon after buying this, uh, as I say, it cost me about 40 or 50 pounds on eBay. Uh, it's money well spent. I saw another bargain, um, uh, a similar item, which I also had in mind to buy. Uh, but this one came up for 12 pounds, which is nothing really. And this is the Helios, I think it's the Brightline viewfinder. I didn't have high hopes for this because uh, obviously there's a lot more going on with this thing. But yet again, um, I was pleasantly surprised with this item. I would recommend it for exactly the same reasons as before. Um, the nice thing about the, the Helios is that obviously it's, it's very small, it's tiny. It fits on the hot shoe a little better. And you've got three bright lines uh, in here. I think you've got 35, 85 and 135. I can just, just turn it to the camera like that. It fits in the, in the pocket. Um, oh, well, I, I, it's, it's, there's a lot of lens there, so I would put it in a soft case. But again, you can carry it in your pocket, have it on the top of your camera. Uh, the nice thing is you can see all your framing options in one go. Um, it, it, the, the largest frame here is 35mm, but if you disregard that and see, look at the entirety of the frame, I think it corresponds more or less to 28mm on a 35mm SLR. So for my, my medium format camera with a 50mm um, shift lens, that's more or less the same. So uh, effectively um, the same performance as, as the turret viewfinder. I like them both for slightly different reasons. I would recommend both um, unequivocally to the uh, enthusiast.